Welcome into LTSN, fourth, home, fourth football game of this reboot season. And we're here at Ryerson Stadium, about 45 minutes out. The Blue Devils have made the trip. They are ready to go. A clash of undefeated teams this afternoon. Our noon kickoff coming from your left to your right. Spawn back to return for the Blue Devils on this gray turf. A beautiful autumn afternoon. Feels like fall. Feels like football. Feels like college football for this Lawrence Tech team. 3-0 and on the year under head coach Jeff Duvendeck. And they're trying to progress to 4-0 today. A hot start right from the beginning a week ago. It was Kendall Williams taking one back 93 yards. That was called back. But here we go again. It's Cam Gillette cutting his way outside, and the Blue Devils find themselves in a familiar position, favorable field position to start right out of the gates. After that return, will take them to about the 46-yard line. And for the second week in a row, they'll start out on offense with Tyler Kolka, the quarterback who has gotten off to such a hot start. Ten touchdown passes through three games, the captain. He'll lead his troops out onto the fields for the second week in a row. Just such a fun guy to talk to, such an awesome personality. He's really captivated this fan base, and Blue Devil faithful have come out, certainly outnumbering the Eastern Michigan club fans this afternoon. Just 23 players on this Eastern Michigan team. It's a pleasure to have you here on LTSN. I'm Jason Ross, Jr. As we see the first handoff to Tanner Foley scooting his way ahead on first and ten for about six yards there. That'll set up approximately second and five. We'll call it a four-yard gain from Foley. Another one of the captains on this LTU offense. The running back who was injured last week on a special teams play. Saw him return. We were very happy about that. The Blue Devil faithful was very happy about that. It was Makai Otero who really stepped in, though, and on the ground, putting up uh, 108 yards. And here's a big run to the left side. It's Foley moving his way. This will be a touchdown. Second play of the game. And Tanner Foley goes 49 yards. A hot start a week ago. And the Blue Devils pick up right where they left off. Forty-nine yards to the house, and Connor Grobel makes it a quick seven zip. All they needed was sixty seconds. And what a beginning on the ground for this Blue Devil team. Couple of runs and a quick score here on LTSN. We'll be right back after this first break. And welcome back into LTSN. A pleasure to have you here for the second week in a row, our first road broadcast of the 2018 season. As Eastern Michigan will try to inexplicably return that, and they'll be taken down at the one, right backed up against their own goal line. They're going to mark it at about the, no, they're taking it back all the way to the one here. And just like last week when the Blue Devils absolutely dominated the field position game. Familiar setting. 
once more here. A tall task for this Eastern Michigan team on the offensive side of the ball. They feel that the run game is what could be established team speed. A lot of RPO for this team. They feel the run could possibly open up the pass, but right now they'll just be looking for a little bit of breathing room. Von Lois, the QB for this Eastern Michigan team, saw him taking reps and warm-ups, made some pretty strong throws. And this Blue Devil defense has been menacing the last couple of weeks. Started out hot last week, and in the backfield that time, taken down right at the one on the QB sneak there, just trying to nose his way ahead for some room was Von Lois. Eastern Michigan comes in at 2-0 on the season. Began the season on September 8th with a win over Battle Creek. Semi-pro football team, the Battle Creek Assassins. That was here at Reinerson. Last week they traveled down to Chicago and looked pretty comfortable against Loyola University. It's a team that was 1-7 a year ago, looking to make changes this year, but they're off to a rough start. That's a safety. Make it nine zip with 13.56 to play here in the first quarter. Minute and four seconds and a couple of different scores on the board already for the Blue Devils. Looked like Tommy Larson and Thomas Lappin in the backfield that time. A couple of guys who really anchor and have passion on that Blue Devil defense. Held Pitt to negative five yards a week ago. Blue Devils off to an auspicious start, to say the least, here at Reinerson. And they'll take their second kickoff of the afternoon. 12.40 to go here in the opening quarter. Brisk, cool, calm breeze blowing from left to right. This Eastern Michigan team coming into this one, we heard the coaches saying, you know, they kind of preach the messages, though, trying to make their team feel like no one cares about them. No one cares that they're here, and they have they want to get that underdog mentality flowing, but just haven't been able to find any room. It's been a rough start, to say the least. This Blue Devil team now, kick returners lining up at their own 36. This is a high looping kick dropping into the hands of Cam Jamison. Looking for up the middle. Cuts back to the 40. Nifty move. Cam Jamison brought down inside the Eastern Michigan 30-yard line at the 27. A 38-yard return that time from Cam Jamison. And now the Blue Devil offense that scored in two plays in one minute will head back out onto the field. Foley still in at running back. This team got pretty deep into the depth chart a week ago. It was a 62-zip blowout at home, absolutely dominant from start to finish against Pitt. And on first and 10 out of the shotgun, they go back to Foley looking for room. And is that a fumble? Was he down? We'll see what the indication is here. They're going to mark. They're going to call it. I believe they're calling it as a fumble, and they will. So an early turnover, and perhaps what this Eastern Michigan team needs. Tanner Foley, his first fumble of the season. And Eastern will get it back here. First play after the safety and first mistake for this Blue Devil team. The self-inflicted mistakes have been really the only Achilles heel through three weeks on the LTU side. And once again, 
appearance early as Eastern goes with the screen pass. Looking to set up Javante Brooks there. He scooted his way for about four yards, but a flag down on that first and ten throw. And we're going to get a holding call here on Eastern that will set them back ten yards. Head coach Jeff Duvendeck spoke about once again going into a game blind, as he called it. You know, Eastern didn't want to trade film coming into this one. We didn't have a team roster until this morning. This will be the last time LT will have to deal with that, though, as part of the stepping stones, I guess, part of the process. And it can be tough in preparation. Looking at a team you've never seen before, but it hasn't been tough early on, as in the backfield that time, Matt Esterly. And was that a fumble? Looks like it did fall out there, and the knee was not down. Referees discussing things over. Pierce as though the Blue Devil offense is ready to come back out. Yes, a fumble. So LTU gives it away, and Eastern gives it right back. And at their own 14-yard line, that's where the Blue Devils will take over. Took over at the 35 after that 38-yard kick return, and Right back out onto the field like nothing happened. Tyler Kolka under center. All runs so far for the Blue Devil offense. That snap is dropped. Kolka has to pick it up. Moves his way forward, though. Took a fortuitous bounce, and he was able to scoot his way ahead for about six yards there. Second and four now. Twelve twenty to play here in the opening quarter. And another drop. Another ball on the ground. Is this the third fumble? They'll give it back to Eastern. An eventful sequence. And the second consecutive possession with a fumble from Tanner Foley. And he'll be consoled by Coach Duvendeck on that sideline. Quick word there. But not the best start for Foley, the captain who... Ran so well a couple of weeks ago on the road against Wisconsin Lutheran. Put up some spectacular numbers. A little over 20 yards last week and struggling to hold on to the ball early on. So the Blue Devils unable to capitalize inside the 15-yard line. Now Eastern once again hemmed up against their own goal line. The handoff bottled up here, pushed back. And they're going to mark it forward progress here. Just back at about the one is where they'll mark this one down. One and a half yard line, two yard line. That's where Eastern will be taken on back to. Nine zip Blue Devils. Timeout called here. They'll mark the forward progress at the seven yard line. That'll set up seconds. And 11 when we come back here on LTSN 9-0, your Blue Devils lead here in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Welcome back into LTSN. Th nine minutes to play here in the opening quarter. A nine-zip Blue Devil lead. It's a 56-yard run from Tanner Foley. A 49, rather, 56 yards on the ground for Foley is trying to stretch it out here and getting a 
considerable gain, almost up to a first down after taking a big hit, was Von Lewis. Couple of fumbles for the Blue Devils. Fumble from Eastern. Lois scooting his way down the near side there. But a flag was back near the line of scrimmage. It appears as though that gain might be negated. Negative 13 yards so far for Eastern with a safety. And they will be backed up. The starts to games have been interesting for LTU. Got off, it was a 14-14 game uh, in the first quarter against Oakland week one. Following week, got off to a really rough start against Wisconsin Lutheran on the road, 22-3. Pulled off their first comeback victory in program history. An offense that caught fire in the second half. Last week, blazing right from the start. This week. Once again on the ground, just off to a really, really hot start. A couple of fumbles, though, have kept the pattern of self-inflicted mistakes going for this team. Penalty yards were really an issue a week ago. A penalty for Eastern was an illegal block. So that'll take them back to the three, negating what might have been a first down gain. What would have been a rush of 15 for Von Lewis. But the illegal block will make it second and 16 here. Daniel Max leading the way there for the Blue Devil defense. Six-foot linebacker from Rochester, Michigan. Part of that core that is so passionate, so fiery. Really felt like the defense was in the backfield before Matt Matone could even think last weekend. You wonder how long these guys will be out there on the field today before they start going a bit deeper in the depth chart. Here's the third down run and out to the 10-yard line to get back to at least the line of scrimmage. But now we'll expect to see our first punt of the afternoon. And that this is a part of the game, the special teams area, where the Blue Devils really excelled a week ago, to say the least. Took a couple back to the house. Kendall Williams will be back at his own, at the Eastern Michigan 40 for this one. Some absolutely electric returns. We talked about the 93-yarder that was taken back to kick the game off last weekend. That was called back. A couple others were called back. They were just simply fun to watch. Carrington Terry had one that was certainly for the highlight reel, Barry Sanders-esque, but just <laughs> was called back. And Kavon Higdon. Part of his two-touchdown two effort last week. Williams, he'll field it. He'll cut up field. Looking for blocks. Looking to split through. Gets inside the 20. Down to the 17. And that's where the Blue Devil offense will take over. Second consecutive possession inside the 20-yard line. 0 for 1 in the red zone this afternoon. And the field position could be flipped like this for the majority of this game. There is a flag down on the goal line here. Oh. 
appears to be on LTU. We'll see what they do here. Referee still in discussion. And now it appears as though the Eastern offense will stay out here. That still awaiting the call here. That might have. Flag was down right at the goal line, and this might be a roughing the kicker. I believe it was, and the personal foul will make it an automatic first down for the Eastern team. So after the Blue Devils get the stop, backing Eastern up inside their own 10, the penalties come back to haunt them once more. 25-yard line is where Eastern Michigan will take over once again here. Vaughn Lewis, his first pass of the afternoon. No, he'll tuck and run and try to move his way upfield. He can run. Nice gain of about seven there, the dual threat quarterback. El Eastern Michigan on their third QB of the season. They've had some struggles trying to maneuver that position. Ground game, though, is where it, this Eastern team feels they have their most assets, have their most potential for positivity. They'll line up in the shotgun on second and short. The handoff going to the run game, but to no avail. Tommy Larson, Jalen Smith combining over there on that right side. Tommy Larson, six foot four, 220 pound defensive end from Wald Lake Northern, who said he fell in love with the coaching staff when being recruited. Larson has had some spectacular numbers. He would actually tie for sixth in the nation with four and a half sacks on the year and second in the nation if these stats counted with about two, shade under three per game. And there's a fumble, ball loose, but that might fall in Eastern's favor. Looks like Tay George fell on it ahead of the first down marker. See where they mark this. That was on third and four. And that will be a first down. Tay George covers it. And Eastern will take all they can get <laughs> this afternoon. Even if it's a bounce, even if it's a hop, anything they can get, they'll love to take it. And we apologize for not being able to give you up-to-date times on the clock in this one. There is no clock here at the factory. They are currently under construction. Bear with us, and we'll have live broadcast for you all afternoon. Back home in a couple of weeks. By week, and then this Blue Devil team heads out to North Dakota to go up against Trinity Bible College on October 6th in Ellendale, North Dakota. Back home for homecoming week. That should be pretty fun. Indiana Westland coming into town. That'll be a noon kickoff on October 13th. We'll have that live broadcast for you. I'll be joined by Dylan Morello. We'll have the broadcast team back together for the homecoming game, the first homecoming game in the modern era. Indiana Westland coming into town. First of two matchups with Indiana Westland this year on November 17th to wrap up the season. Blue Devils will face Indiana Westland. That'll be down in Marion, Indiana, though. Defensive coordinator Dan McEwen, his troops trying to come up with the stop here. The fumble that bounced ahead. 
out of the timeout here. That'll set up Von Lois once again. This is an Eastern Michigan team that was 1-7 a year ago, gave up 26 points per game last season. Spoke to a couple of players before the game, and there was an energetic vibe. They're ready to play. They love the 2-0 start. Down 9 nothing early on. Four twenty-eight remaining here in this first quarter. On first and ten from the thirty-seven, high snap, rolling right. Lewis has to step up, bottled up, and sacked. Zachary Brown in the backfield that time, leading the way. And a loss of seven will set up second and 17. This Blue Devil defense, they've talked about how it starts with establishing a presence in the trenches, in the trenches, and the coaches have really pushed this defensive group every single day on the Blue Devil side. And that has come to fruition in the games. We see it again there. Diving ahead was Lois, but just about a gain of three. Zachary Brown, the Gaines, Michigan native was able to push Eastern Michigan back to their own 30. Eastern Michigan has made their way back up to the 38. That'll set up third and 10 here. Another high snap. Heaving deep. He's got a man at the 20. Lewis hooking up there with Morgan Thompson. And that'll be marked all the way down at the 14, able to exploit. The Blue Devils secondary that time on a 48-yard gain. So the first big play of the afternoon from this Eastern Michigan team, this all comes after they were initially stopped and the roughing the kicker penalty Set them back out to about the 25. A fumble that bounced ahead and was recovered gave them another first down. And able to come up with the 48-yard gain that time on third down. I believe that was an uh, offside. They're going to call it a false start. Penalty there to push Eastern back five after the gain of 48. So back at the, at the LTU 19 now. Blue Devil defense has been out there for a few minutes. Here's the pitch. In the backfield that time, trying to stretch it out to Javante Brooks, but hit by a couple of Blue Devils, met promptly that time. The run game, trying to stretch it to the outside. That has not been a proficient route for this Eastern Michigan team early on. As they lose yards now in back-to-back -back plays, it will be second down, though. Second and 17. Uh, 
Empty set here. That RPO on display for this Eastern Michigan team. That time they lined up Tay George. And he took it ahead for about five yards. That'll sit up third and long again. First down would be at the four-yard line for this Eastern team. And they suited up just 23 players this afternoon. Second week in a row where the Blue Devils have certainly had the favor in the numbers and in the conditioning. 65-degree day. This Blue Devil team has run into a couple of hot ones at home. But it's cooled down. Feels like fall football weather. Once again, we'll see the empty set here. Will they run or will they pass? Having to try to tuck and run here to no avail. It's Thomas Lappin, Matt Esterly, and Daniel Max in the backfield on third down. And now this will be a curious equation for this Eastern Michigan team. Will they kick it or will they try to go for it here on fourth and long it? It'll be about a 36-yard field goal from here. And the reason I say, you know, obviously most teams would go for the field goal on, you know, fourth and 14 here inside the opponent's 20, but sometimes these club teams don't have the same kicking ability or just simply have a kicker on the roster that you would obviously have at a higher level than simply what LTU has. That'll wrap up the first quarter here on LTSN. Nine zip Blue Devils. A 49-yard run on the second play of the game from Tanner Foley and the safety that followed 9-zip here on LTSN here in Ypsilanti, Michigan. We'll be right back. More football coming up here on this college football Saturday. Oh, I think that was it. There we go. Welcome back here into LTSN. Eastern Michigan, as predicted, they are going for it. This might be picked off. Was it low? It hit the turf on fourth down. Diving there for it was Robbie Best. Nonetheless, Blue Devils will get it back here. 48-yard pitch and catch from Eastern Michigan, their longest play of the afternoon after it looked pretty bleak for them early on. Were able to produce something there, fed off a couple of penalties and a couple of fortuitous bounces, but unable to convert on a possession that felt like they really needed to there. That felt so important for this Eastern Michigan team. And now they look to come up with a stop. Blue Devils back inside their own 20 for the first time. Coca rolling, play action pass. Here's C.J. Thompson able to get ahead for a first down gain on first and 10. About a gain of 11 there. Thompson, the swole back at six foot four, converted D lineman to swole back. Nice little wrinkle that. LTU has thrown into the offense, and Coca able to find him there.
First and 10 from the 34. This time, Coca looks deeper. It's Terrell Cunningham galloping ahead inside the 20, inside the 10, down to the 5. About a 57-yard gain there. And the Blue Devils are in business. Cunningham had three receptions for 74 yards a week ago at a, about a 32-yard reception and a touchdown last week. And off to another hot start there. Blue Devils at the five. Coca, the handoff. Otero, second week in a row that he scored, powering it through. Kai Otero earning playing time and showing what he's worth this time in Ypsilanti. And the Blue Devils extend the lead. Connor Grobel looking to make it 16 zip. And he's converted now in his last 10 extra points. Coca to Cunningham, 61 yards, followed up by Kai Otero, who met with our LTSN podcast team earlier this week. Such a well-spoken kid, very passionate about the game, very passionate about putting hard work into the game. And that has been on display over the last few weeks as he has officially appeared to have really worked his way into that running back rotation with Tanner Foley and Ahmad Sabah. Otero came in last week and put up 108 yards and a touchdown. Didn't need any time to warm up last week and apparently ha hasn't needed much time to warm up this week. An offense that has the ability to be a scintillating one at their best. They're up 16 zip on the road here in the first half in Ypsilanti. This kick will hop down Tay George from his own five. He'll be gobbled up at about the 11. A 137 yards of offense early on for this LTU team. Back comes out Lewis Vaughn, who has only thrown one pass on the day, and it was completed for 49 yards. Coca on the other side, two for two for 76 yards. So the quarterbacks have been pretty efficient <laughs> this afternoon so far. And I'll mark that at the 11-yard line for the Eastern Michigan offense to start back up again and try to find something again. We're able to feast off of the mistakes that the LTU defense presented them on their last possession. One fumble on the day for this Eastern Michigan team. Two fumbles on the day for the LTU offense. Shotgun formation here. Now they're tucking, running, a big hit up the middle. You could hear the pads popping from up in the press box. Looks like Esterly there clacking away with Amari Johnson. So now second and eight. Screen pass, looking for blockers but not finding anything there. It was Jeremy Wajacha.
Third and seven here for Eastern. Couple of minutes into the second quarter. 16-0, Blue Devil lead. The snap rolling. Johnson gets it away. Flags down around the 17-yard line. This will be a holding call. And it'll go against Eastern. Well, they'll reverse the call. They're going to give this one to LTU. A holding call on the Blue Devils will set up first down for the Eagles. Second consecutive possession where they've been able to get a first down when facing, possibly having to give it back. Trying to show his skills on the ground once more. Amari Johnson kind of substituting the quarterback role of Von Lewis this afternoon. Lewis is one for one with 49 yards through the air. Now Von Lewis back out there on second and nine. Eastern Michigan at their own 19. 2-0 on the season, going up against the 3-0 Lawrence Tech team. LTU up 16. Zip. There's a big hit. Larson jarred it loose. It rolled out of bounds. What a hit there from big Tommy Larson. He's been fun to watch on the defensive side of the football. And showing up once again there. Really feels like Larson could be a consistent threat. Not only feels like, but it's showing like Larson could be an, a, a consistent threat over the last, over the next few years for this Blue Devil team. Now back at their own nine, and the Eagles will find more of the same, but more flags come flying. Three flags out there and Eastern thinks that they'll be gaining yards here. We'll see what will come out of these flags. That hit was delivered by Matt Esterly. And they're gonna give a unsportsmanlike conducts penalty to Matt Esterly for the celebration that came subsequent to the hit. Esterly has been a force, but second weekend in a row that we've seen these personal fouls pop up. Esterly had two tackles last week. Assisted on a sack and forced a fumble. But that mistake will not be taken lightly by the coaching staff. Ball will come back now up to the 28-yard line. Eleven twenty-five remaining here in the second quarter of a 16-0 LTU lead. Kai Otero and Tanner Foley, the two touchdown scores, going deep down the sideline here. Jalen Smith 
in coverage that time against Tay George. Tay George went down on the track, holding his right knee. Smith comes over trying to help him out. Assistant coach William Jackson will jog over. Injuries are something that this Eastern Michigan team is really trying to avoid this year. William Jackson talked to me about that before the game. That is not a good sight. George, one of the speedy assets for this Eastern Michigan team. They'll check up on him, and we'll go to break here on LTSN. 16-0, the Blue Devil lead with under 12 to play here in the second quarter from Ypsilanti. Welcome back to LTSN. Big second down and 10 here for Eastern. After the personal foul gave them a first down ball, tipping in the air there. Might have been off the hands of Jalen Smith, smacking the turf in frustration, the gray turf here at Eastern Michigan. Eastern spent quite a bit of money on this relatively new field. We'll think about all the recruiting tools nowadays, whether it be a field, whether it be uniforms. Certainly plays a role in the college game with these young kids now. Tay George still down on the track being looked at to the left of the Eastern bench. Not a good sign for this Eastern offense. That'll certainly be a hit. Blue Devils are without Kavon Higdon this week in the walking boot. He still feels positive about it. Spoke to him before the game. Such a nice kid. Always a pleasure to talk to these guys. Had a spectacular electric performance last week, and the Blue Devils will definitely hope to have him back. Good that they have a bye week coming up to get these guys some rest. The last couple of weeks have been very conducive to that rest factor. 62-zip blowout last week against Pitt. Really allowed the Blue Devils to go deep down the depth chart. Saw a couple of guys in who wouldn't normally be in, even getting in the end zone. Late interception, late scoop and score for the Blue Devil team last week. Meanwhile, it'll be third and ten. Appears to be a flag down on the field that Coach Duvendeck is indicating he would like to decline. Although we hear another unsportsmanlike call coming up from the field. Seconds, and this might be another Eastern first down. Another 15-yarder. And another week that these penalty yards are beginning to rack up on the Blue Devils' side. Now up to 43 in the first, court, in the first half. Eight twenty-three to go here in the second quarter. 
They try to go to the screen pass again. That was off the hands. Will they say he had possession of that? They will. Blue Devil football, interesting call there. From up here in the broadcast booth, it looked like it kind of hopped off the hands of the intended receiver and looked like an incomplete pass, but they're going to call it a – they're going to say he had possession long enough for that to be a fumble. Blue Devil offense won't complain. They'll head out in plus territory. So now Tyler Kolka, two for two, 76 yards on the day. The balance of this offense has been on display early on. Something we talked about last week. Otero powering his way ahead that time for another gain of 10. Under eight minutes to play here in the second quarter from Ypsilanti. Pleasure to bring you our first road broadcast of the LTU reboot season. Back at home in a couple of weeks. We'll have the broadcast team back together alongside Dylan Morello for Indiana Westland, that homecoming game that will follow up all those fun homecoming festivities. Here's Coca aiming for Kendall Williams. He hits Kendall Williams. Williams, a couple of nice moves. And into the end zone, Kendall Williams. Flag back at the 29. Will this stand? It'll be remain. And they will call it a Blue Devil touchdown. Flag was on Eastern. Hands to the face. 22 zip. Lawrence Tech, 29 yarder from Kolka to Williams. And the O is flowing again for the second consecutive week. Connor Grobel's extra point attempt is blocked. They'll try to scoop it up, but brought down. Grobel was 10 for 10 on extra points before that. So we remain 22 to 0. Here in Ypsilanti, we'll be back on the other side of the break. Pleasure to bring you some road action here on LTSN. Welcome back to Eastern Michigan University. Blue Devils kicking off here after the 29-yard touchdown pass from Coco to Williams. Eastern Michigan will take a knee and send the offense back out there. After a pass that was ricocheted off the hands of Amari Johnson last time this offense was out on the field. 9.32 to play here in the second quarter of a 22-zip game. Defensive coordinator Dan McEwen. You'd think that he 
probably be satisfied with this team so far. Penalties certainly have been something that this Blue Devil team will most likely have to look back on in the film in the film room once more. Jalen Smith has done a really good job in the cornerback position. In this, in the early minutes of the second quarter. Empty backfield this time for Von Lewis. He'll run, looking to scamper, looking to use his speed, and does there, but then took a big hit. That'll be about a 13-yard run, longest on the grounds so far for Eastern. Groans of approval released from that LTU sideline. Groans of disapproval released from the Eastern Michigan sideline. They might have wanted a late hit there. There's a big collision at about the 32-yard line. That's where this Eastern Michigan team will set up now with under nine to play here in the second quarter. Once again, we apologize for kindly giving you generalizations on the time. This Field is under construction, no scoreboard up, as there's the, there is the first down run. They go back to the ground once more. The ground game is where Eastern Michigan feels they can establish their presence and perhaps open up the passing game. We have seen that. They were able to hook up on a 49-yard pass earlier in this one. Haven't seen Tay George get back out on the field yet for this Eastern team. One of the real threats on offense for the Eagles. Second and nine. Blue Devils find the run after about a gain of four. The handoff that time to Amari Johnson, nickname OJ. And that'll set up now third down and looks like six to go. Here's the third down snap. Larson, Max, pushing a pile over to the far side. And another big third down stop as Eastern goes to the run game. Not having the ability to really go to the passing game when they would like to on going, you know, going up against this Lawrence Tech defense. That might have been considered an obvious passing down situation, but not really for this Eastern Michigan team. They find themselves having to go to the ground game more often than not. And now what will they do here on fourth down and about six from their own 31, down 22 zip, under eight to play here in the second quarter. They'll punt. Back to punt here will be Tay George, who is back out on the field. That was nearly blocked. Might have been tipped by Cam Gillette. That'll hop down and settle down at the 45 there. Cam Gillette might have, got, might have gotten a paw on it. He'll go over to the sidelines and get a few high fives from his teammates. Special teams continues to be a positive for this Blue Devil team. Up 22 zip, offense looking to take over. Rolling hot, we'll be back here on the LTU Sports Network. Welcome back to LTSN. First and 10, Blue Devils taking over from the Eastern 
46-44 yard line. Up 22 zip. This offense has you know, scored on back-to-back -back possessions. Polka looking to the sideline here, awaiting the signal with 8.48 to play here in the second quarter. The first down give. Timeout called by Lawrence Tech. After a gain of six, we'll set them up at second and four when we come back here on LTSN. Under nine to go, 22 zip, your score here at Ipsy. Seven minutes, 52 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Ball at the 39 of Eastern Michigan for this Blue Devil offense. 181 yards of total offense for LTU early on. The balance has been on display. Play action pass. C.J. Thompson at the 25 and spiral down at about the 23. So a gain of 17 there will spot the Blue Devils just outside the red zone. Another timeout called by Lawrence Tech. We'll go to another quick breather here on LTSN. Welcome back to Ypsilanti. Blue Devils threatening just outside the red zone. Colca throws. Colca connects. Cunningham. Touchdown. Second weekend in, a, in, weekend in a row for Terrell Cunningham. Making his way into the end zone. Cunningham, 84 yards on the day, caught the big pass early on, and now the Blue Devils have struck again, 28-0. Colca to Cunningham, make it 29, 421 to go here in the second quarter from Ypsilanti, Michigan, LTU football on LTSN.
Blue Devils will now boot this one away. Having trouble with the kick was Morgan Thompson. Has to return from his own 10. And the field position stays in favor of Lawrence Tech. So just 62 seconds to play now here in the opening half. LCU up 29-0 off the Cunningham touchdown. They've been in control. They've been in command, especially over the last few possessions. Under pressure. Rolling is Lewis. Heaving deep. Was that caught in bounds? Incomplete. Unable to get the foot down was Jeremy Wajacha. Mostly Blue Devil fans filling in here at Eastern Michigan University. Blue Devils took the 40-minute bus ride this morning. Quicker trip than a couple of weeks ago heading out to Milwaukee. Although, fast forward a couple of weeks from today and you'll be in North Dakota. So, Blue Devil team will leave a few days early for that one. Going, to, going up against Trinity Bible College. As that pass floats out of bounds to the Eastern Michigan sideline. Eastern with 61 yards on the day. One of the leaders out on the field this afternoon, Tommy Larson, has spoken about how this LTU team is in such a unique situation because there are no seniors. So, you know, Larson said it's the guys who have been here since last year or really whoever wants to go out there and step up. And you see these opportunities for guys deep into the depth chart to make some noise out on the field. And this Blue Devil team has made some noise out on the field in the opening half, overcoming a litany of mistakes. 29-0 your score. After one half here in Ypsilanti, you're watching Blue Devil football on LTSN. We'll be right back after the other half on the other half of the break. 29-0, LTU leading on the road.
Welcome back into the Lawrence Tech Sports Network. A 20-point second quarter. A 29-point first half. The Blue Devil is on the road here in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Reinerson Stadium, the site. Hoping to improve to 4-0 on the year. Looking to get to 2-0 on the road. Blue Devils will begin the second half on defense where they've been able to hem Eastern inside their own 20 and really inside their own 10 for the most part. Defense will be without Matt Esterly in the second half. Was ejected after two personal foul calls. Looks like Emmanuel Ifeosame is in now. The 6'1", 320-pound lineman from Nigeria. One of the great stories on this Blue Devil team. Kind of started playing football late in life. Picked up the game. Loves being with his teammates. Love be, loves being with this program. Wallace Tagata out there as well. Tommy Larson still in the ball game. Blue Devils up 29 zip. And here we go. Lewis back in at quarterback, looking to run, looking to find room, unable to do so. Same picture that we saw throughout the first half, repeating itself on the very first play from scrimmage to kick off this second half. And we'll get a penalty here on Eastern, it looks like. It'll set them back even further. Eastern team tried to establish the run game in the first half and didn't really ever produce much for them. It was a struggle throughout. And now on second and 12, they go back to the ground, scooting his way outside for a nice gain here. It's Johnson trying to spark some life now into this Eastern team. And they will call it a first down up to the 32-yard line. Gain of about 11 there. Now they'll try to go to the pass and incomplete. Looking that time for Christopher Ramirez. On the coverage, looking that way where Jalen Smith has patrolled so well throughout this one. In for him there was Miles Young. Miles Young, the 5'10", 170-pound defensive back from Ypsilanti. Returning to his hometown for this one. Blue Devils have a goal of being considered the best conditioned team in the country. And we'll see how conditioned they are in this second half. They look pretty good early on. In the backfield, Wallace Tagata led the way, finishing things off. It was Emmanuel Ifeo Same showing what he can do. He was a little banged up going into the season. 
Saw him at practice a couple of days ago. In the backfield there, and he'll trot off for a breather. And that'll set up third and 22 for this Eastern Michigan team. Under 13 to play here in the third quarter. Out of the shotgun this time. Cut down. It's Daniel Max. And that'll give the Blue Devils a chance to return a punt here. After last week, we're just kind of waiting for one to break. And punting unit will head out onto the field for Eastern Michigan's club team. Looks like it'll be Kendall Williams back to return this one. Williams had a really good first half. Caught the 29-yard touchdown pass from Tyler Kolka. We'll see if it's Kolka or Jessica out on the field when that Blue Devil offense does come back out. We saw Jessica. Oh, and that punt is blocked. Max trying to scoop it up. Ball bobbling in the end zone. Who can find it? Blue Devils have it. Touchdown. Wallace Tagata scoops it up. They got pretty close in the first half. Make it 35 zip for the Blue Devils on the road here in Ypsilanti. Thrilling right out of the gates here in the second half. It's the Blue Devil special teams unit once again wreaking havoc as you get a jump from the Eastern Michigan defensive line there. This special teams unit led by special teams coordinator Nate Williams who did such a fabulous job with this group last week and throughout the week. They have picked up right where they left off all three phases of the game this afternoon. Once again, on display for this Lawrence Tech team. Another flag flies quickly prior to the snap. This one appears to be a false start on Lawrence Tech. It'll set the extra point attempt back a little bit. Last extra point attempt for Grobel. One to... Try to make it 23-0, rather, was blocked. Blue Devils return the favor, though, and take one to the house. Now looking to make it 36-0. Did that one ring off the upright? It did from Grobel. So perhaps the blocked extra point earlier has taken Grobel slightly out of his rhythm. Still 35-0 though, still comfortable. Still the Blue Devils up here on LTSN. With 13-20 to play here in the third quarter. Last week it was a 30 Eight point first half. This week a 29 point first half. Not too shabby once again. And now Gibson will come out to kick off. Projected high of 65 degrees here in Ypsilanti. As another one will roll into the end zone. Feels around the low 60s. Just like it should during a college football Saturday here in the great state of Michigan. As LTU continues to try to build up their program in search of a 4-0 record. They've gotten off to quite the start in this 2018 
reboot season. First season in 72 years. Connor Grobel had a cool story during our coaches podcast earlier this week on Tuesday, speaking with Lauren Plant and Coach Duvendeck, discussing the fact as we have as we have more flags coming out here, discussing the fact that you know his dad and uncle both were LTU grads, so that was part of his decision. But his dad and uncle have told him about how you know when they were at LTU, they were there were no sports on campus, there were no after school activities going on it was just kind of go to class and take off but now you know the road fans here at Eastern have outnumbered the Eastern home fans here in Ry at Ryerson Field and at home a sellout week one exceeding capacity over 1800 standing at the LTU athletic field Following week, a couple people traveled out to Wisconsin for the matchup with Wisconsin Lutheran. And last week, once again, a fabulous crowd. We'll expect to have a fun atmosphere come homecoming week on October 13th. Blue Devils will be back in Southfield going up, going up against Indiana, Lu Indiana Westland. That'll be our next broadcast here on LTSN. I'll be back with Dylan Morello. Uh, it's, a pleasure to be, it's a pleasure to be in the booth here at Eastern Michigan. Here's the kickoff. It'll drop into the hands of Kendall Williams. He's been electric on the return so far. One touchdown on the day for Williams. That 29-yard reception earlier today goes down in Eastern Michigan territory. At about the 45, and that is where we'll spot this with 11.28 to go here in the third quarter. Blue Devils up 37-0 here on LTSN. Coca back out under center, whistles ensue before the snap could get off. Appears to be another timeout. And now we will get to take a little bit of a breather. Once again, Blue Devils up 37-0 after the blocked punt was taken back to the house here on LTSN. Welcome back to LTSN. 10.28 to play here in the third quarter. Kolka back in under center. Hands off to Ahmad Sabah. Looking for a hole and a first down gain for the Blue Devils. Sabah's second carry goes for about 13 yards there down to the 31 yard line. That'll put him at about 18 yards on the day. Foley leading the way with 56 after that long 49-yarder. Fumbled twice early, though. Haven't seen much of him since. Makai Otero for the second straight week. He's put one in the end zone. Now the, another handoff to Sabah. And another first down gain for Sabah. 
Namas Ahmad Sabah beginning to heat up here. Has the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield too. Such a versatile back from Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Average just under five yards a carry week one. You see the potential for him to do that on display here. Could that perhaps set up the passing game here in the red zone? They will go play action. Iaquinto at the bottom of your screen. They'll find, looks like Matthew Elrod down there inside the five. That was Elrod. As the Blue Devils find themselves inching closer to the end zone. Polka now on first and goal from the seven to Sabah. His third run of the drive will go down inside the five. Looked like a pickup of two there. Blue Devils on the ground today. They're up over 100 yards again. 156 through the air. And once again, that run defense has been spectacular for the Lawrence Sec Blue Devils. Holding Eastern's club team to 12 yards on the day. Second and goal, Sabah powering his way in for a touchdown. Ahmad Sabah and the Blue Devils are up over the 40 mark once again. The 5'9 back with a low center of gravity took control of that drive. They march their way down the fields. 43 zip the score now. Grobel's kick is up, and it's good. Looking to get his confidence back. And the Blue Devils are flowing with confidence here in Ypsilanti. 44-0, second week in a row. Blue Devils in absolute command. We'll go to break here on LTSN. Coming right back here from Ipsy. Welcome back to LTSN, 44-0 after Ahmad Saban, an integral part of that last drive, put one in the end zone. Blue Devils will kick it off again here. Tanner Foley back out there on special teams. Otero, a couple of running backs making their way in, combining for the hit there. Spoke about how LTU owned the field position battle last week, and Eastern Michigan setting up shop inside their own 30 here from the 27. They mishandle the snap. This is picked up. Miles Young. Scoop and score. Blue Devils. Lightning strikes twice.
And they've hit the 50 mark on the road here in Ypsilanti. One play was all they needed defensively as this thing is beginning to unravel. With 8.42 to play here in the third quarter. Fifty-one nothing. Your score. Once again, we'll take a quick break after a couple of quick scores from your Blue Devils. You're watching Blue Devil football on LTSN. This game started out with a couple of undefeated teams going at it. The Blue Devils appear to be in firm command though now and appear to be ready to send Eastern their first loss of the season. Still about seven minutes to play here in the third quarter. LTU leads 51-0. You can start going down the depth chart now for the second week in a row. We see Ryan Crane out there, the man who had a scoop and score of his own late in that game against a pit last week. And that was really an energy boost to the LTU squad late in what was already a convincing blowout. Now the question will be, can they, for the third time this season, set a program record for points in the game, the third time through the first four weeks? Last week they set that mark at 62. What will it be this afternoon? They haven't needed to run one back this afternoon here in Ipsy. They have blocked a punt. They have had a couple of scooping scores. They're now trying to power their way through the left side. Eastern once again going to the ground. Just such a one-dimensional offense against the Blue Devil defense that specifically against the rushing game, you're just not going to find much. And it doesn't matter how far they go down the depth chart. That appears to, to be the reoccurring theme throughout this one. Eastern was able to set up a little bit of passing on the road last week, a little bit of offense on the road last week, but not sure if they'll even want to take a look back on this film. This time they do find a hole. And down that right side, it was Javante Brooks. And he gets up to the 45 for Eastern. That is where the first and ten will come for this Eagle team out of the shotgun formation. Another high snap. They've struggled with those snaps throughout. They'll tuck and run. The RPO starting to work a bit for this Eastern team. And a little bit of life from the Eastern sideline. Tay George. Really has taken over the quarterback duties on this drive. One of three guys you kind of see rotating in and out at that QB position for this Eastern team. He has speed. He has awareness. And he has guile. And he was injured earlier in this game. 
We knew that would be a big hit had he not returned, but he has made his way out on the field after early we saw him in a bit of pain on that eastern sideline. Once again, this shotgun formation, expecting an RPO look here. This time the handoff, and a gain of about four on first down. Uh, they'll push it back to a gain of approximately two. So second and eight coming here in LTU territory now. Eagles moving with a tad bit of momentum. Kai Ramos made the hit on that last play. This time bottled up in the backfield, leading the way, Cam Gillette. Nice fundamental hit there. Lowered the shoulder and lowered the boom. And Gillette, the linebacker from Battle Creek, Michigan, really epitomizes the closing speed of this defense. On display there, has been on display throughout this affair here in Ypsilanti. Noise of approval cascading down from the stands here at Ryerson Stadium where the Blue Devil faithful have taken over for the most part. Tay George back again, rolling, throwing low and off the gray turf. Starting to go down to the depth chart, seeing guys like Demarcus Bush and Des Price getting in there, now wreaking havoc. Excited to see those two play Bush and Price. They really show off the depth of this defensive line. Demarcus Bush, a big guy with speed. Defensive coordinator Dan McEwen. Once again, trying to dance to no avail. Another hit in the backfields. And it is beginning to turn into target practice for Lawrence Tech. That was on fourth down. The turnover on downs will give the ball back to LTU. They engineered a precise technical drive last time they were out on the field. Looks like Tanner Foley back in at running back, and Tanner Jessica now into the QB position. We saw him last week once again getting some valuable reps as this game starts to become a discussion of the depth chart. Coming back to the football that time, making a nice catch was Jamison. It appears to be Cartwright, rather. James Cartwright, the third. So that was just a gain of two. The signal is in on second and eight. They go to the ground game. Foley, who broke the 49-yarder on the second play of the game, will pick up an LTU first down. Flag down here. 
And looks like a couple of more will fly in. Unsportsmanlike frustration beginning to settle in on the eastern side. Appears as though these should move LTU forward about 15 yards. Possibly more. Referees coming together. Blue Devils in their huddle. Chatting with Coach Duvendeck. They're up 51 zip. Nice and cool here in Ypsilanti. And we'll go to a quick break here on LTSN. Welcome back to LTSN, start of the fourth quarter. Our apologies once again for any kind of time confusions this afternoon here in Ypsilanti. No scoreboard here at Reinerson Field. As I mentioned earlier, under construction. Blue Devils will set up inside the 10, though, to begin the fourth and final quarter. Up 51-0. Tanner Jeska getting some nice reps here. They'll go to the ground game. A little roll and throw. Finding Matthew Elrod. Jessica. And another Blue Devil touchdown. Matthew Elrod, the 6-4 swole back on the play action pass from Tyler, Tanner Jeska. And the Blue Devils find themselves up 58 zip. Five points away from a program record. And still 14.52 to go here in regulation. We'll be right back here on LTSN. Fifty-eight zip lead, and the Blue Devils looking to just get some good things to take a look at in the film room now over the next week. They'll improve to four and zero on the season, a program best four and zero here in this eight-game probationary season. And Blue Devils prepared next year to join the Mid-States Football Association, the 15-team league that is a tough league. They've claimed the winner of six of the past seven NAIA national champions. 
Certainly will be a tough competitive league to step into next year, along with Indiana Westland. We look forward to that. Still only halfway through our opening year, though, and it's been a delight to bring it to you here on LTSN. I'll be back with Dylan Morello on October 13th at home for our homecoming battle with Indiana Westland. That'll be a noon kickoff as Emmanuel Ife Osame collapsing there on the running back, making his presence felt. And you can catch highlights of this game on this upcoming Monday. You can find that on Fox Sports Detroit, our LTU Sports Report show, our 22-week series airing each Monday on Fox Sports Detroit at 4.30 p.m. You can find your highlights of LTU football, LTU, LTU women's volleyball, LTU women's soccer, LTU men's soccer, and plenty of more sports to come. Baseball getting underway this afternoon with fall ball out at Jimmy John's Field. We also have live streams of that action going for you. And a lot more moving forward that we are thrilled to have the package for an LTSN is another ball is muffed out of the hands of the running back. Who was that picked up by? Looks like Eastern might have fell on that one. And they're happy to do so in at their own 20-yard 20 20 line. Back in at quarterback now is Von Lewis. Saw him for most of that first half. Eastern came into this one with an underdog mentality. They knew it would be a tough task. Obviously something that LTU is doing, going down in that depth chart that we spoke of, is something that Eastern simply can't do with 23 players on their roster. They came in 2-0 today. They'll leave with their first loss of the season. Plays like that are what we'll look back on with this week four matchup. Lauren Plants made a really good comment on our broadcast of our coaches show earlier this week saying that it felt like these Blue Devil players on the, on the defensive line were in the backfield before quarterback Matt Matone could even think for Pittsburgh last week. And it's been more of the same this week as more flags are out on the field. More talking going on. Appears to be more frustration on the eastern side. A very passionate group of eastern players. These are guys obviously at the club level who simply have a pure love for the game. There have been some good club football teams in the state of Michigan in recent years. Oakland, obviously their success... They're in transition, though, after losing their head coach, trying to reestablish an identity with that program, a team that has become a fixture deep in the National Club Football Association playoffs. LTU obviously defeated Oakland in convincing fashion earlier this season and the opener. First game in 72 years. That was a 53-14 victory for the Blue Devils, and Lawrence Tech well on their way to what appears to be another shutout victory if they can hold things here. This will be a punt that was nearly blocked again. Spencer Iaquinto will take this one from his own 36. Looking to cut outside. Slips three to the 20, to the 15. Finding room, scooting his way ahead. Diving for the pylon. They're going to mark him down at the one. Aya Quinto building up our anticipation there. He's listed as an athlete, and you can see why they're so versatile, so athletic. They'll slot him in the receiver spot, obviously, most of the time, but he can take those duties as well and did a nice job with it there. Setting the offense up on the one-yard line. Chance to set a program record. 
for total points with another touchdown here. You can't help but think with the penalties over the past couple of weeks, they could have put even more up on the board. Jessica, handoff, Otero pushed back. One of the better pushes we've seen from the, from the Eastern Michigan defensive line this afternoon. There's a breach, a late hit. Two flags, one flying in. Ball can't get much further, obviously, but. I'm moving from about the two to the one and a half. Jessica will get the signal. Offensive coordinator, Keith Beckham. So the offsides penalty moves things ahead two yards. For Tanner Jessica, here's Otero. Jessica on the keeper, touchdown. Tanner Jessica really getting involved. And the Blue Devil team has set a program record for points in the game for the second consecutive week, I might add. 64 0 on the road. Here in Ipsy, pouring it on. Things really beginning to unravel. And you can make it 65 zip. We'll be back here on LTSN. Fourth quarter, LTU up 64 0 here in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Looking to improve to 4 0. Seven thirteen to play here in a lopsided affair. Sixty-five zero in the fourth quarter. Keith Brown, a nice tackle there at the nineteen yard line for Lawrence Tech. Flag goes flying though. We'll see what the call is here. It's been a game that will be listed as flag laden. They've been flying around throughout the air all. Afternoon, part mental mistakes, part frustration, part excessiveness. Flag came in where that hit was made at about the 18. The chains are set up for first and 10 from the 18 of Eastern Michigan. Still no call. Referees kind of discussing with each other. They'll just decide to pick up the flags here. One referee kind of had an incredulous look. 
And they'll decide to give a bit of a reprieve there. Timeout called, though. Eastern Michigan will talk things over with head coach Larry Page. Assistant coach William Jackson. Blue Devils will head back to their respective sideline. And we'll get another break on what has been a pretty choppy second half. But free-flowing for the LCU offense, 65 zip. Already 14 fourth quarter points here on LTSN. Welcome back to the Lawrence Tech Sports Network, our third broadcast of LTU football. They have been absolutely tenacious on the defensive side of the football. And that continuing continues on that play. Blue Devils have held this Eastern team to 24 yards on the ground, 73 total yards of offense for Eastern. Doesn't feel like they've had that much. Kind of gained it all in one chunk in the first half with that 49-yard pass. Under seven to play now here in the fourth. Blue Devils will have a week off before heading, before heading to Ellendale, North Dakota to face Trinity Bible College. Then back at home for Indiana Westland. There is another hit in the backfield. No time to think for this Eastern Michigan team. This has turned into simply a highlight reel of tackles and not much room, not much space to get anything going on the Eastern Michigan side. It has been an absolute parking lot in the backfield. Haven't been able to find any true threats rather than Ty George. This time, just getting out of his own end zone is George. Low throw, incomplete at the 25. Gillette was there in coverage. Pass was intended for Javante Brooks. And that will set up fourth and 15. This is a position where the Blue Devils were able to block one earlier this half. A 36-point second half for this Blue Devil team. They have poured it on at a 38-point first half last weekend. Eastern trying to get a timeout. They wanted a late substitution there. Just feels like they haven't been able to do anything right in this second half. And we'll go to another break as both teams will try to refresh a bit. Final minutes of this final quarter. Winding down here in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Here on LTSN. LTU up 65 zip.
Welcome, welcome back to LTSN. You're on the site of Eastern Michigan University. Eastern Michigan's Division I team is out in California enjoying, enjoying the beautiful weather tonight at San Diego State as there is a, an awful punt that will just roll out of bounds at 31 for Tanner Jessica and this offense to take over. Last week we saw Kashawn Moore in the late stages, third string quarterback for this LTU team, get some reps. Wonderful to see that. Final five minutes of the fourth quarter now. And right on cue it is Prather. Kashawn Moore making his way out onto the field. A 5'10", 185-pound QB from Fort Wayne. Second weekend in a row getting reps. They'll go to the ground game. All you really have to do now is run out this clock. Under five to go here in the fourth. 65-0 the score. 284 yards, 119 of those have been pounded away on the ground. Tyler Kolka, efficient, would be probably an understatement. Six for six, 156 yards, two touchdowns. Jessica has come in. He's two for two. So the quarterbacks are currently eight for eight on the day. And now Kashawn Moore will have his turn on second and 10 from the Eastern Michigan 31. Flag out of the backfield. This appears to be against LTU. Set them back in the late stages here. Penalties, third week in a row. Fair to say that it's still been the Achilles heel of this team. Something that against tougher competition can come back to haunt you when you look back on possessions and say, you know, what if we had scored there? Next season when you get into conference action you definitely don't want to say that so something to clean up once again for this Blue Devil team but the offense has been positive flags go flying once again here question becomes who got the start first who got the jump first there a quick breach on the back Line. The last penalty was an illegal motion. That time it was Christopher Ramirez just kind of jumping the gun there on the defensive side of the football for Eastern. So now LT will get that five yards back. Or his hand off to Foley, close to a first down. But a gain of nine there for Tanner Foley, one of the leaders on this football team moving forward. Talked about how much of an honor it is to be a captain for this Blue Devil team. The captains were selected by their teammates. It was a player decision. That run will set up third and one. Appears as though they're just going to wrap things up. 65-0 will be the final. They'll call it a day here at Eastern Michigan. A program record for this Blue Devil team. 65 points. Second weekend in a row. Eclipsing the 60 mark. One to look back on. One to be proud of. Once again, it was a pleasure to bring it to you here on LTSN. I'm Jason Ross, Jr., 
saying so long. We'll see you back here in a couple of weeks for more LTU football when Indiana Westland comes to town for homecoming on the LTU campus. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful college football Saturday.